Thank you for plugging into this Family Life News podcast, streaming issues-driven, family-focused news. This is Faith Under Fire, our weekly radio feature and online podcast from Family Life. I'm Greg Gillespie. Today's focus is the harsh and divided tone which pervades our society. My guest is Paul Kenger. He is the professor of political science at Grove City College and senior director of its Institute for Faith and Freedom. What are the big issues that you are watching there at the Institute? Well, I would say that our namesake, right, two of the things that are under assault in America today are faith and freedom. So when we call ourselves the Institute for Faith and Freedom, we really are for that, for defending faith, for defending freedom, and defending the freedom to have faith, to exercise faith. Of the, of the freedoms in the First Amendment, freedom of religion, press, assembly, speech, freedom of religion is first. And it, in fact, James Madison had argued, Greg, for the inclusion of freedom of conscience in the First Amendment. He argued for that at the Constitutional Convention. And unfortunately, he lost that argument because a lot of the founding fathers now, quite wisely said, they said, well, yeah, we, we don't need freedom of conscience. Freedom of religion should include that, which, uh, <laughs> which really, indeed, it should. And Madison argued that, he said, the freedom of conscience is like freedom of property. It's like a man's castle. It's something that you own. It's something tangible. You may not be able to see it and touch it in a tangible way, but it's there. And, it, and it's as sacred as a man's castle. So freedom of conscience is something that, that we're going to need to fight for, you know, people of faith in America today, as it's increasingly under assault. You should have the freedom of conscience, in addition to their freedom of religion and freedom of faith, to disagree with the cultural revolutionaries on some of the issues that they want us to come along and agree with them on. If, if, you know, if your faith, if your denomination, if your church teaches that marriage is between one man and one woman, that life begins in the womb, that you know, male and female, he created them, that there are two genders. You ought to be able to have the freedom of faith and conscience in America to pursue that, to believe that, without people forcing you to violate your freedom of religion and conscience. So, you know, those are some of the things that you know, we're defending at the Institute for Faith and Freedom at Grove City College. And, uh, you know, I've always defended in, uh, in my own writings as well. This question of freedom of conscience and the marketplace of ideas is under assault in a way that certainly in our lifetime seems like this is unprecedented. But you are a student of history as well. Has there ever been an era in American history where things are this divided and where various platforms seem to be shut down or right thinking is the only one allowed and there isn't discussion and debate and search for compromise? Well, you know, Greg, people often say, right, it's the worst it's ever been, you know, on this and that. And oftentimes it usually isn't. But I would say in that respect, it is. I mean, this is truly a cancel culture. And I see it as a Christian conservative, not just from people on the left to really have started it with political correctness and false claims of diversity and tolerance, which you find out they really don't believe in diversity and tolerance as soon as you disagree with them. I, I've been chagrined to find it even even among conservatives on the right. And I could tell you at the Institute for Faith and Freedom at Grove City College, I'll bring in a speaker that certain people on campus, including conservatives, might not like, and they want me to cancel the speaker. And I said, no, we believe in freedom of speech. You want marketplace of ideas? You don't like the cancel culture? You say you don't like the cancel culture? And then you come to me to cancel this guy? We're not going to do it. I know you have been writing for American Spectator, but you have been named the editor. What is that seat like for you to take a look around and, and look at the American culture? Well, yeah, it's, it's a great honor, a lot of fun. And and I see the American spectator as that. It's, it's an American spectator. So we really sit back, take a look at the scene, the political scene, the cultural scene. It's always been a magazine of culture as well as politics. So we've had, over the decades, writers as diverse as 
you know, William F. Buckley Jr. and Malcolm Muggeridge, Tom Wolfe, the great novelist. People who started at the American Spectator include George Will, Malcolm Gladwell, Bill Crystal, Bill McGurn of the Wall Street Journal, Greg Gutfeld, started at, who's now at Fox News, started at American Spectator as an intern. And you know, Greg, I started reading it when I was an undergraduate at the University of Pittsburgh. So for me now to be the editor of this publication that I've so long admired and enjoyed is is a real honor, and it's it's a thrill. I'm 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 so humbled that R. M. Material Jr., the founding editor in 1967, who is still the editor in chief, asked me last year to do it. Our guest, Paul Kenger, is senior director of the Institute for Faith and Freedom at Grove City College, where he teaches and researches political science. Paul Kenger has also been recently promoted to be the senior editor at The American Spectator. Faith Under Fire is a part of our noon report on Family Life Thursdays at 12 noon. We also offer it for you on our news podcast page, available 24-7. Thank you so much for listening. I'm Greg Gillespie, Family Life News.